Hi everyone, on the Corona Tracker, we promise to break through at least the infodemic. The infodemic is making the pandemic that much worse with rumors and fake news and WhatsApp forwards. So we promise that on this Corona Tracker, we would bring you one scientific fact or medicinal development every day only from verified and attributed sources of information. Today we're looking at chloroquine and we're asking whether the old anti-malaria drug can actually provide some solace, some help to those who have been found positive for the coronavirus. Now let's look at the history of chloroquine. What we do know at the moment before we bring you the very interesting historicity of how chloroquine became an anti-malaria drug is that this is a, a compound that is being used in combination with an antibiotic called azithromycin. So in other words, scientists are testing the combination of hydroxychloroquine, which is a less toxic version of chloroquine and the antibiotic called azithromycin. Now, how did chloroquine begin to be known to the world and to the medicinal community? Chloroquine's history begins with quinine. It's a word that all Indians of a certain vintage know. And its history begins with quinine, which was extracted from the cinchona bark. In fact, I was fascinated to read, and I know you'll be fascinated to hear this, that as far back as the 17th century, in countries like Peru, the cinchona bark was known as the Jesuits bark because of its seemingly magical capacity or miraculous capacity in treating fevers. Now you cut to the 1840s. The British are in India and the Indian soldiers are a big part of their expansionist dream and also of keeping you know, their hold over India, but there is malaria to contend with for both the, the colonizers and the colonized. So that's when the first mass use of quinine really begins in India for both the British and the Indian soldiers. But remember that quinine is extremely bitter. So the Indian soldiers to cope with the bitterness start mixing it with soda and sugar. And believe it or not, that is how the first tonic water was actually born. So much so that in 1870, Schwepp introduced a product called the Indian Quinine Tonic, launched equally at the colonizer and the colonized. Because remember, malaria back then was the great equalizer. But of course, we're not here to talk about tonic water or gin and tonic or, or you know, pleasant things like that. We do have a health emergency, a global health emergency to talk about and whether chloroquine can work is really important. We know that the FDA has not given it approval uh, yet, nor has the WHO, but it is being permitted uh, for, you know, compassionate and experimental use on those who are actually uh, suffering quite severely and are willing to have uh, this drug tried in, in treatment. The good news is this, we have two research papers, two recently published research papers that do talk about its efficacy. The first one is from China and uh, this report says that when uh, the results came back from laboratory tests uh, on cells, it showed that hydroxychloroquine did slow down the infection from the virus. The second report is from French researchers just published in the last couple of days, which says that hydroxychloroquine helped in clearing the virus from the upper airways. But the one problem that experts are pointing to is that the sample size in the French report was just 36 patients, which experts say is just too small. Experts like Adar Poonawala, who heads the Serum Institute in India, have told Mojo that it's very important that chloroquine now be the subject of gold standard proper clinical trials and that of course is going to take some time so the health warning is this don't go raiding the chemists and the pharmacies for your stock of chloroquine certainly do not self-medicate we have had the news of two poisonings in Nigeria from people who self-medicated on chloroquine wait for your doctor to advise you wait for your doctor and only listen to the experts and meanwhile the good news is that six clinical trials six clinical trials have begun across the globe to look more closely at hydroxychloroquine and its combination with the antibiotic azithromycin in the treatment or some sort of therapeutic relief for those who are suffering from the coronavirus and the world is keeping its fingers crossed that maybe this old drug that we knew as quinine in India could provide some solace to the world's perhaps biggest medical 
emergency and challenge.